So the last section of paper one is section C. It's on uh, physical landscapes. It's about rivers and coasts. And the big thing for you to keep in mind is that you never get a nine marker in this section. It's only four and six and everything else is map skills one and two markers. OK, um, some schools will do glaciation, but the majority of schools in the UK will do rivers and coasts. So this first video is on rivers. The second one is going to be on coast. First thing you need to know, hydrological or water cycle. Some key terms, evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, surface runoff, groundwater flow. You need to know what they are. I'm not going to go through them. They all define over there. We need to understand how it all works. OK, water is a limited quantity of water on our planet. It just goes around and around and around and around. The water we're drinking, I don't have a water bottle, but hypothetically the water in there is going to be the same water that arguably has been drunk by uh, Julius Caesar and the dinosaurs. Okay, it just goes around and gets recycled naturally. A drainage basin system is a catchment area. The watershed is the boundary of this catchment area. The source is where the river begins. Tributary, uh, a smaller river joining a bigger one. Confluence, two rivers meet. A mouth is where the river uh, empties itself into the sea. Um, I think a bit, a bit like a school catchment area. Okay, that's basically the same idea. You need to understand how it works. The bigger drainage basin system, the more time it takes for the water to get into the river. The shorter the drainage basin system, the quicker it gets for the water to get into the river. That affects flooding, which I'll talk about later on. Uh, the main fluvial processes you need to know is erosion. The key thing, erosion only happens because of water. Water causes er uh, erosion. There's four types, hydraulic action, abrasion, nutrition, solution. Weathering is a breakdown of rock by changes in atmosphere. It's got, no it's got not necessarily got to do with water. You've got chemical, mechanical, biological. An example of a mechanical one is freeze for thaw action. Water freezes, it expands, causes cracks to, exp uh, causes cracks to expand. Okay. Transportation is the movement of sediment by the river. Traction, suspension, saltation, solution. You've got a picture. Uh, you need to have a picture of them there, but they are ways in which sediment moves down a river. Saltation comes from the Latin word salte, salte, Italian word saltare, which means to jump, which is the uh, rocks jumping at the bottom of the of the river. Deposition is when rivers lose energy, like us, they just drop what they're carrying because it's uh, the heaviest things get dropped first. Uh, characteristics: you need to know the difference between a long profile and a cross profile. Long profile follows a river from source to mouth, and you can see it on its side, and you can see how the gradient changes. A cross profile is basically you cut the river in half, and you can see the kind of V shape of it and the valley. Upper course, middle course, low courses are the three courses of a river. Uh, you need to know that the upper course is steep, it's narrow, uh, it's shallow, it's fast flowing water, it's V shaped, it's vertical, it's got interlocking spurs, waterfalls, and gorges as the land forms. Middle course is more gentle gradient, shallower valleys, less turbulent, less friction, it's got more lateral erosion, uh, it's got meanders and oxbow lake, and the lower course is very gentle, really wide valleys. You've got pictures down there. I don't know why this one's gone in the wrong format. Um, you've got it's the widest, deepest part of the river, and you get the floodplains, the estuaries, and the levees. Um, they, you, all these landforms, you need to know them. I'm not going to go through all of them, but they're the ones you need to know. Okay. The case study we do in Bren Green is the Seven River because we are basically near the estuary. Is that the Seven River is the longest river in the UK? It starts in the Plin Limon Hills of uh, Mid Wales, goes uh, the estuaries near Bristol and Gloucester. Uh, it's a V shaped valley. It's got waterfalls in the upper course, uh, Oxbow Lakes in the middle course, and it's got the second largest tidal range in the world, 90 meters in um, in the lower course, which means we've got the tidal bore um, in the Seven Estuary and YR River in Bristol. The Avon is tidal as well. Okay, how we can manage uh, the River Seven? Well, urbanisation has increased the risk of flooding along the river. Dams and reservoirs have been built, and we've got a monitoring system to improve um, predictions of when floods will occur. Okay, Shrew uh, Shrewsbury is a good example of where it happens badly. Um, st storm hydrographs definition: it shows how a river changes after a storm. It can be used to predict floods. There's a rising limb is that row that goes up. Falling limb goes down. Peak rainfall is a bars, peak discharge is a hump, and the distance between the two is called the lag time. A bit like a YouTube video that takes time to load. It's the time it takes for the water to reach the river, basically. The longer the long lag time, the less likely it is to cause flash floods. Discharge is volume of water. Got some keywords that you need to know, okay? Causes of flooding, there's some natural ones. The amount of rainfall, the type of the rocks, whether it's permeable or permeable. The relief, steep or not. Size of the drainage basin system and whether the ground is saturated, but there's also man made ones. Land use, tarmac, urbanization reduces infiltration. Uh, cutting trees down, deforestation increases the chances of surface runoff. How we can manage this? We can use hard engineering or soft engineering. You've got examples of what they are here. Hard engineering is hard, man made, uh, long lasting, artificial. Um, uh, uh, solutions. Soft engineering is working with nature, basically wetlands, afforestation, using beavers, etc. Using more natural, uh, eco-friendly uh, solutions. And the example of a case study is Boss Castle. We've got a picture here that causes the impacts of responses over here for you to read through. Okay, but it's an example in the UK.